I want to read from Ephesians chapter 5. I'm just going to read a little while here. It says, Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Children typically follow their parents, don't they? Yeah. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye are sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable. Uh, excuse me proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I think a lot of people miss that, don't we? You want to see how close to the world we can tread and all under the guise of witnessing, of course, mm -hmm. winning the, the lost, right? So we go for dumpies. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, and whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is, is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And this might be my favorite verse in the whole Bible. You know what it is? Do tell. You don't know what it is? Wives, obey your husbands. No. Nope. Wives, <laughs> submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Same thing. Different way of putting it. Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now that's my favorite line of the whole Bible. It is. That's a good verse. My favorite book is that he might 
sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so uh, men love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth it and cherish, cherisheth it even as the Lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband and that's it for chapter 5 now one thing I'll say here he only mentioned the wife a couple of times you know why that is it was more than enough because the wives get it how many times did he mention the husbands here I lost count you know why because we need to be told over and over and over I won't comment I know me and Samuel will have wives making sure need to be told over and over making sure us husbands know we're to love our wives as much as Christ loved the church and how much was that enough to die for the church huh? well I'm certainly not going to try to commentary uh, uh, you know Ephesians by any stretch but uh, verse 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reproves them verse 12 for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret yeah. This seems like a lot of Christians, you know, um, it's hard to tell them apart anymore. <laughs> it's just hard to tell them apart. And it's, I think it's sad if you have to ask somebody if they're a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's, you can't tell by looking at them, you can't tell by listening to them. If you have to ask them, and if they say yes, are they really by the, their actions and their speech and you know? That's, aren't we to be a peculiar people? Are people supposed to know that we are Christians, living for God? You know? Should be able to tell very easily. Yeah. By our appearance and by our words and by our deeds. Yeah. It's not yeah. a mystery. We've been, you know, we've been uh, how long has it been now? Since what? Since we've come to the realization. 1993. 1993. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> seventeen? No, it's been longer than seventeen years. Twenty-seven years. That's I was, I was missing ten there somewhere. Yep. Um, you know, we've been seeing it the whole time. It just seems like it's getting. Oh, look at it like, like this. Mo like most things, it's getting more and more in your face. When we, yeah. when we, when God revealed Himself to us, we thought we were saved. We were going to a right. non a church that. There was no standards, there was no holiness, and we looked like the world and acted like the world. We've talked about it before, that we drove into the church parking lot and putting our cigarettes out, came out of the church, 
lighting our cigarettes up. Before we were out of the driveway. Our per language hadn't changed, our dress hadn't changed. Mm, our thought, you know, just our mentality. But when God revealed himself to us and we were filled with the Holy Ghost, our Boom. life was different. 180 degrees different. We wanted people to see mm. that there was a change not just on the outside, because that showed too. We didn't dress and gesture the same way we did, but we right. wanted people to see the change on the inside, and there was no stopping it. We couldn't be, we, we couldn't stop it if we wanted. Mm -hmm. It flowed through us. Yeah. It, uh, and that's not that arrogance. Was something that was just something that that happened. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we did or or anything like that. It was just we had to yield to it. We had to yield to the prompting and the guiding because we've seen people that have been filled before not yield to it when God has has encouraged mm -hmm. and they've chosen to hang on to their worldly ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the Bible says, seek and ye shall find, ask and it shall be given. And we wanted a change and God gave us a change. He sure did. How many years was that ago? Twenty seven. Twenty seven years ago. Um that's weird. Yeah, you know, it's, and, and I think, yeah, I think a lot, in, the, in, in just recent, um, and it's, it's been happening that we know, um, so many people are being misled, even at their church. Right. You know, and that's sad. People that really want something. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's sad. You know, there's the, there's the term for education, dumbing down of America. Well, it's the same way in, in our... In, Christianity. Yeah, it's yeah. the dumbing down... Of you know, Christians. That's, that's, that's sad. And, you know, we've heard, you know, uh, comments and stuff that um, they feel out of place at church because <laughs> they're trying to live according to the word and they're kind of being chastised. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we, we understand that. <laughs> we know how they feel. People are being chastised at a church for doing. What the Bible says to do? Mm -hmm. Yep. Huh? Is that goofy or what? Seems unreal, doesn't it? That's goofy. It, 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 that sounds more like a Satan's church than a God's church. Yeah. It's definitely a lost church. What's the what's the enemy's uh, what's the enemy enemy try to do to the to their enemy? They do more they try to destroy them. They do, but they divide and conquer, right? Mm. So if, if Satan can can get into the church and divide that church. So anyway, so the saying is attributed to Hitler. So how's it go? Tell a lie. You tell a lie long enough, loud enough, often, often enough. People will believe it. Yep. yep, and that's exactly what's happened in the church. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sad. No, not, not all churches. Not all not, churches. Not all churches are like that. Well, but we hear that. about it and, and see it happening more and more. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of good churches out there. But if we take the power away that God intended for the church to have, it makes the church benign and ineffective. And therefore... It's exactly where the enemy wants it to be. So we as Christians have to be responsible to know that there is power and direction in the word. And it's not to look and act like the world. We're not going to save mm -hmm. the world by imitating them. No. Because the world doesn't want imitation. The world wants to be freed from what's binding them. Mm -hmm. We did. Mm -hmm. There's freedom in the word. So we just need to keep you know, reading our Bibles and and serving God the best we can. Praying. Absolutely. Fasting. Praying, seeking, fasting. Living for God the best we can. And, you know, it's... Do we need, you know, do we need a, a good pastor? We do. If you, if you can uh, find one. You know, people. We do need a, a good, a good pastor, um, absolutely. But some people can't find one. You know, they, just because they're called a pastor doesn't necessarily make them 
And, and a good okay. pastor doesn't mean that the pastor agrees with everything that you agree with. Okay. <laughs> you know? But the pastor's got to believe that the Word of God is... The instruction. Is, you know, the authority. That's the, the top uh, authority is, is the Word of God. And if, if the pastor doesn't believe that, then, then obviously it's, he's not a good pastor, right? right? So I don't know how we got on that from reading the Ephesians there, but... Well, because we were talking... Um, you know, Ephesians says, and I'm paraphrasing... Wives, submit to your own husbands. <laughs> <laughs> husbands, die for your wives. Oh, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we love and praise you today. Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness, Lord. And, you know, Father, uh, we do just pray for our nation today, Father. You know, just uh, with all that's going on, let's pray for you know, the safety of, of this nation, Lord. Just, uh, that it pray. would turn back to you. Hmm, that we would, absolutely back to you father seek you Lord Jesus you are the only one you know that can save us Lord Jesus Lord God, we give you the honor and the glory and the praise in your most high name we pray Amen. Amen.